monkeys. Jane's 30 year study, the longest of any animal in the wild, has convinced her that chimps deserve our very special consideration. Chimpanzees live to be 40 to 50 years. Every chimpanzee is as different one from another as we humans are, so they all have their own unique personalities. And even now, after 30 years in the field, we're still learning completely new things about them. And one of the most fascinating things is the long-term pictures you get of family histories. These long-term bonds between mothers and their youngsters, the bonds that grow up between particularly brothers and sisters and between other members of the community. And now we know the blood relationships of many of the chimps in our community. For me, it's always been the most fascinating to watch the relationship develop between a mother and her offspring over the years. The development of the infant, because the child chimpanzee follows so many of the same patterns and stages as the human child. And the relationship between the mother and her older offspring is particularly fascinating. the child doesn't even begin to start leaving the mother until eight or even nine, and then is only away for a short time before coming back to travel around again with mum and the younger brothers and sisters. And the relationship between the brothers and sisters themselves is fascinating in that it's very close, and if the mother dies, then the older one will adopt the younger one, even if this means a brother adopting his baby brother or sister. It's very charming. You have two kinds of play. You have play when the chimp is alone, which is acrobatic or twirling around in the trees or turning somersaults or very often playing with objects. social play and this can be gentle particularly if a small infant is one of the play partners or it can be very wild and involve four or five youngsters chasing around through the trees it sometimes ends in squabbles and fighting but they're not usually very long lived play is most important in helping the chimp to learn about his physical in lone play and his social environment. I think everyone finds interesting this idea of chimps using tools. Now what have you discovered about the way they use tools? We know pretty well that tool using is something that's learned by the child from watching the mother, the brothers and sisters and other individuals in the group. Thanks to Jane's research at Gombe, it was proved beyond doubt that chimps teach their offspring to make and to use tools to fish termites out of holes. It was a major discovery. And this is why you can look back and think that each tool using pattern that you see in any group of chimps was obviously the invention of some chimpanzee genius in the far distant past. And the tool using, you say, does vary a lot, but in, in different areas. Yes, it does. And for, for example, the, the Chimpanzees in West Africa have the hammer and anvil technique and they open hard-shelled fruits with stones and, and thick pieces of wood. At Gombe, the most frequently seen tool is a blade of grass or a little twig from which you may strip the leaves for fishing for termites or white ants from their nests. 
but they also crumple leaves into a kind of sponge to suck water from hollows in the tree trunk that they can't reach with their lips. Mm -hmm. They use long sticks to fish for very viciously biting ants and sweep it through the hand and gnash the ants, ants up with their teeth. And they also use rocks and sticks as weapons to hurl or to brandish. <laughs> So like humans were chimps shown to be, that scientists quickly saw how to use them as human surrogates. That famous first step into space was taken not by man, but for man, by a terrified chimpanzee. that chimp pioneer in space. But it was lack of space that was the grim destiny of most captive chimps. As Jane Goodall discovered to her horror, in many laboratories in the interests of medical research, chimps are kept in solitary confinement in tiny cages. In these conditions, the animals become totally deranged. They go mad. Chimps used in language research at least have company and stimulation. Who am I? Roger, that's right. That's, that's my name. That, what color is that? It's white, yes, yes. What's this? The chimps yeah. learned more than 300 words of American Sign Language, but they were still kept in cages. <laughs> Because they are so like us and can mimic our ways, chimps are frequently exploited for entertainment. Although it may seem to be innocent and harmless fun, Jane Goodall believes it's difficult, if not impossible, to train chimps to take part in these stunts without coercion. In the case of chimps used by Spain's beach photographers, cruelty is well known and well documented. In 1988, a reporter from the BBC Nature Programme joined the holiday crowds in Benidorm, and although Spanish law forbids it, soon found a beach photographer with a chimp. Can we ask you where you got the chimpanzee from? Where did you get the chimpanzee from? Dinners, my friend. Because it's, this, hey. is, this is illegal, isn't it? You asking somebody for Phil or what? But you're not allowed to do this, are you? No, you cut away, my friend. Don't be pest. What do you want? You want to smack in your anywhere. face or what? Can we, can we ask you a couple of reasonable questions then? I mean, just wonder, we just... You like a photo? Well, we don't want a photo. I make a photograph to you. 5,000 per second. What do we just, you say? We just, what do you say? We just want to ask uh, a question. Shut up. Hey, hey, we just hey. want to ask a hey, question. Well, I take well, it well, easy. After dark in Benidorm, the BBC team found other photographers with other chimps, openly doing business in the nightclubs. This sad little performer, dressed as Superman, appeared to have been heavily drugged. In the wake of all the unfavorable publicity, the Spanish authorities claimed to have cracked down on the photographers and driven them out of business. But as these photographs, recently acquired by Nature Watch researchers, demonstrate, there's no doubt the wretched trade is still flourishing. Now, if you can change our attitudes towards chimps, what can we do in practice to help? There seems to be very little. Well, I think if you look at the overall picture, you just feel helpless. What, what can you do in the face of so much cruelty and abuse and misery? But if you take a piece of the picture, then I think you can do a lot. And a perfect example is Simon and Peggy Templer, who began trying to save the photography chimps in, from the Spanish beaches and Peggy wrote to me about the first chimp that they ever took from the beaches they bought her her name was Jenny back in 1972 or 3 since then in the wooded hills of Catalonia the Templars have turned their home into a refugee center over the years they've cared for 40 chimps rescued from photographers and other ruthless owners 
but it's impossible for the Templars to keep the animals here indefinitely. Charlie and Butch, his companion, will shortly be transferred to a permanent sanctuary in England. And Jane Goodall is here to help them make the move. It's a miracle the animals are well enough to travel. Both have been severely abused, particularly Charlie, as Jane can instantly sense. He looked to me haunted, yes, sad. sad. Mm. I could read in his eyes that he'd been through sheer hell. All his teeth children. had been knocked out by, um, not taken out by a dentist, just hammer, just like that, broken off. But his second teeth are just coming through now, mm. his uh, eye teeth, long ones. They presumably knock the teeth out because it to stop them biting, do yes. they? We had one here that had about 30 cigarette burns on its face and arms. Um, the, to, to dominate it, they used to do that, put out a cigarette on it. And he'd only got to take a cigarette out and like that, mm. wouldn't move. Well, this raises a lot of questions, doesn't it? First of all, where are these young chimps coming from? Mostly, I think they come over uh, to the Canary Islands first, so as to be offloaded in Spanish territory. They're smuggled in? Smuggled in by uh, small tramp steamers. Yeah. They get paid a miserable sum. And from there, they're farmed out and sold to the photographers. And, and yeah, from the, in the Canary Islands, they're uh, in Spanish territory. So there's no problem about flying them to Alicante, to Valencia, or anywhere in Spain. You know, what's awful, too, is that this same beastly trade we now, f now find has begun in Mexico and in Israel, on the beaches there. At the age of five, they're too heavy, too strong, mm. and uh, don't obey orders anymore, and dangerous. So they get they're killed. The usual manner of disposal is to slit their throats and pitch them over a boat into the sea, and they buy another one. What's so dreadful is that for every baby that makes it and gets here for this horrible trade, you can reckon that up to ten die in Africa. Mm. To ten? Because, yeah, because you see, you can imagine a mother is shot. They, they catch the babies by shooting the mothers, typically. So you shoot a mother, she falls to the ground, but the baby's hurt too, so you lose those two. You shoot another mother, she crawls off wounded and dies later, so those two are gone as well. Then you shoot another and you get the baby, but because of the shock of being pulled off the mother, because these are just like human children, yes, then the, many of those babies, even though they get them unwounded, will die on this horrendous journey from the dead mother to the dealer camp to Spain or Spanish territories. It's, it's truly shocking. Simon, what sort of condition are these animals in by the time they get to you? Well, it varies. It depends how long they've been operated by the beach photographer. Um, we've had some here that were absolutely total drug addicts. Drug addicts? Drug addicts, yes. They drug them every evening to keep them calm and quiet and so on. Do they become addicted to drugs in the same way that humans do? I mean, do they have withdrawal symptoms? We had one that took six months for her to get over it. Every evening at exactly the same time, about four o'clock in the afternoon, she would get into the corner of the cage and bang her head on the floor because it was a time when she had her shot. And of course, they'd, they'd give them beer to drink and whiskey to drink and they'd give them cigarettes to smoke. And everybody thinks it's screamingly funny. Watch it. But they're highly visible down there on the beaches because we've seen them. Now, why don't the authorities put a stop to it? Good question. <laughs> the answer really lies in um, uh, thousand percent of notes, or five thousand percent of notes, or ten thousand percent of notes, mm. which the photographers can well afford to pay to bribe the officials, be it the police, be it the uh, mayor, and, and so on down the line. Presumably they're not very happy about your activities, are they? No. They've been up here and told us in no uncertain terms that if we don't stop, they will do something about it. Hmm. And uh, when, they, when Peggy said to them, uh, my wife said, well, what do you mean, do something about it? They said, well, we could easily have you rubbed out, just like that. Sleep, Pudge. Sleep, Pudge. For Butch, the first few steps of the journey to England 
are taken in the arms of Steve Matthews, who owns the sanctuary in Dorset that's to be the chimp's final home. Both animals have been sedated, a necessary step in order to carry out a thorough veterinary inspection. Only when the detailed medical begins does it become clear to Jane just how brutally Charlie's been treated. Talk about cruel. Honest. Wouldn't I like to get my hands on the brute that did that? Tragic, isn't it? I, I think he must have been on drugs a long time because I think he tried to inject himself he did, with he? the needle. He did, didn't he? And he offered it to me to inject him. He pulled my hand towards his arm. At last, it's over. Butch and Charlie have completed the journey from Spain to Dorset. Thanks to unyielding bureaucracy at both ends, a trip that should have taken 24 hours has taken 48. It's been an exhausting experience for everyone, and it shows. How much brighter and better things look by daylight? It's a new dawn, and a fresh start in a new country. Uh, true, they're isolated in these quarantine quarters, but that doesn't seem to have dampened Charlie's spirits. <coughs> After six months in the small quarantine cage, Butch and Charlie will be joining other rescued animals in a large enclosure. Here, for the first time, they can enjoy something like a proper chimp environment. How did the chimps react when they when they first tasted the the freedom of the, of this compound? Oh, I'll never forget it because they'd been in quarantine for six months, and they came tumbling out. We actually all had tears in our eyes because they were so thrilled to be out. Well, of course, they hadn't been climbing trees for a long time, and during a chase, two of them climbed way up a tall tree, and suddenly saw the ground below them and they froze and they just stayed there staring down for the longest time and then very gradually they went down the bravest one first you've watched chimps in the wild you've also watched them in these kind of conditions is the behavior very similar it depends on the background of the chimps what is actually amazing is that even if you bring together chimps who have backgrounds as diverse as being born in the wild, being born in a zoo, being born in a research lab and brought up without a mother, they nevertheless manage to form themselves into a socially cohesive group, but they won't necessarily behave in exactly the same way as they do in the wild. If these chimps were actually put back into a truly wild environment, do you think they could cope? They would have to be taught, they would have to be shown the different foods to eat. You would have to make quite sure they all did know how to make nests at night, in fact. And unfortunately, although it sounds so idyllic to put chimps back in the wild, there are very, very few places where it would be safe. So what we're saying is that realistically, 
um, the, the fate of, of these chimps is to remain in a refuge such as this? For these chimpanzees, probably the answer is to expand the areas for them and maintain them here as a self-contained group. It's far from being an ideal solution. How much better if the chimps had never been plucked from the wild. But since they are with us, Jane insists we must do our best for them. And who knows, we might even benefit from the contact. Chimpanzees, in a way, can act as a bridge between humans on the one hand and the rest of the animal kingdom on the other. They're so like us, we perceive them in a different way from the way we look at cats and dogs and mice and rabbits. But we share the world with all these other wonderful animals, and we've had a very arrogant assumption of human superiority, and I think that's what we've got to change. Six months after their arrival, Charlie and Butch are duly released from quarantine into the large enclosure. For Charlie, even a little liberty is a daunting prospect. He's like a neurotic old man, scared to cross the road and in need of a helping hand. While Butch gallops away to freedom, or the nearest thing to freedom he'll ever know, it takes the friendly embrace of keeper Jeremy Keeling to give Charlie enough confidence to face even these limited horizons. Like other long-term prisoners, he's still happier with the warders than with his own flesh and blood. <laughs> 